Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to share how I paint a mountain landscape in the Chinese brush painting style. Uh, the first thing I did was um, make a dilute mixture of light gray ink and I do that so that I can sketch out the mountains first and then I'll go back over them later as you'll see with the dark gray ink. And I have the brush pointed away from me and I'm kind of pulling down the paper as I move the brush. And this just creates the outline of the mountains. I have uh, three mountains in my landscape. Uh, you can have uh, as many as you want. Try and keep your compositions to odd numbers. That just makes things look nicer. We'll also include um, a land mass at the bottom of the painting and we'll put a little flowering tree on it. Um, I'm adding uh, darker ink now to my brush so that I can go back and add more of the details to uh, the painting. As you go over marks that you've already made, the ink will um, bleed into the other um, wet areas and this creates kind of a nice effect. It kind of gives you the, a misty um, kind of a look to your mountains like they're kind of tall and in the clouds. If you want to have a more um, rugged or jagged mountain scene, uh, instead of pulling the brush towards you, you can put the brush uh, kind of flat on the paper. So the entire brush is on the paper and then you pull down towards you and that will create a broken texture which will give you more of a um, kind of snow covered mountain scene where you have gaps in, in between the ink and that kind of creates the look of snow on mountains. And um, I'm adding dark ink to kind of the landmass at the bottom uh, so that I can put my a tree on something. For the tree you can use a smaller brush and I'm using um, a, a small stiff haired brush for that and you kind of start at the trunk and then work upwards um, using lighter pressure on your brush as you um, do the smaller branches. And then you can add uh, little grasses at the bottom of the painting. Um, that just adds another layer of texture. And I like doing that. I just flip the brush upwards. Um, if you find that your brush is um, too wet, you can always dab it off on a paper towel and that removes some of the excess uh, ink and water and gives you a drier brush, which will give you the ability to make finer lines. So now that we have a tree, um, let's add uh, some leaves to it. And I'm using a combination of um, a permanent rose and a darker red color for my leaves. Um, so this could either be a flowering plum tree, it could be a, a maple tree in uh, the fall, it's up to you. And I'm just using a, a dabbing motion to create the leaf structure. And I'm trying to keep um, the canopy of the tree kind of in a rounded look. I don't want it to look like a circle, but I want the top of it to have some roundness to it. And I'm just dabbing the brush. So I'm just pushing down and then lifting up. And the more pressure you put on the brush, the bigger the dot is, the less pressure, the smaller the dot. And if you add uh, a darker color to your um, tree in just a few spots, then you, you have um, a nicer look to your tree because you have some uh, variety of color. It doesn't have to just be one uh, solid color. You can add ink uh, to your colors just to darken them up a little bit, which is what I did in my painting. You can also add some of the color to the bottom um, just to give the idea that there's uh, little branches uh, that are kind of coming off of the tree and they're also flowering. If you don't want your uh, colors to blend into the mountains, you can uh, go back over um, with a darker color or slightly darker color uh, after it's uh, a little bit drier. And I have different colors of uh, different tones of ink 
uh, for my mountains so that I can show um, perspective. Uh, the darker mountain kind of in the center, that's um, more prominent so it's coming forward whereas the ones in the back have less detail, they're a lighter gray color so they're further in the background. And you can add as much or as little detail as you'd like to your painting. Now in the space between the mountains, where the mountains end and the land, I'm going to add very light gray to indicate um, more of um, mist or clouds. And you do that with very light ink. And although it goes down on the paper and it looks uh, darker, it's because it's more water, so the paper is wet. And as soon as that dries, you'll see that it's a much lighter gray color. And you can put it at the bottom of the painting as well. Uh, and that will indicate uh, either more clouds or you could use it as um, to indicate water. You can also add to your mountains to kind of give the indication that the, there's trees in the mountains. You can add uh, with a very small detail brush, you can add little, um, little lines um, to indicate uh, some of the trees and you wouldn't see a lot of them. You'd only see them kind of on the central uh, mountain and you can do that in dark ink along uh, the edge. And then just to give our uh, mountains kind of another uh, layer of color, and if you take that um, same red mixture that we used for the trees and you add water to it so you dilute it quite a bit, uh, with the side of the brush, you can kind of lightly run over your mountains and add a little bit of color. Uh, in some uh, Chinese brush paintings, you'll see this. It's done with, um, you do it with blue, you can do it with green. It kind of depends on uh, what you want your painting to look like. I chose the um, pink because it kind of went with the colors and I didn't want to introduce another color. I wanted to keep this very minimal style of painting. And you can add uh, trees at the bottom. Um, I added a, a little collection of uh, small kind of um, evergreen bushes um, it just to kind of break up the bottom of the painting. Um, it looks a little bare on one side. Um, so I wanted to give it a, a, a little bit more to balance out all of the, um, the different uh, dark colors that I had at the, kind of at the top of the mountain. Um, and then for one last final touch, I'm just adding a few little birds in kind of a medium gray ink. Uh, so they kind of looks like they're flying away from uh, the mountains. And I just want a small number of them. You don't need to put a giant collection of them. Um, you know, three to five is, is a good number. So there you have a mountain landscape done in the Chinese brush painting style. Um, if you like this uh, video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And I have uh, Chinese brush painting classes on my Teachable website, and I will put a link to it in the description box below. And I also have uh, downloadable booklets available on my Etsy shop. And I will also put that link in the description box below. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please click the subscribe button. And you can click the little bell icon to be notified when I release a new video. I will see you in the next video. Bye.